Imagine a hospital that did just about anything to put patients in their beds and doctors who performed hundreds of unnecessary heart surgeries on these people. Here are the lengths the government had to go to in order to stop the fraud and why many believe the person responsible got away with it. If the Walls Could Talk podcast shares the tangled history and true crimes that happened at Chicago's Edgewater Hospital, listen to If the Walls Could Talk wherever you get your podcasts. Darkcast Network, indie pods with a dark side. Yeah, There's a, a D word I wasn't expecting. Oh, wow. we, got to, we got to pull in the Dutch. Yeah, All right. we get to go across the ocean again. It's been oh, a while. I'm it's in. Uh, while. Yeah, okay, you got me. I'm ready. All right, so we're headed to Amsterdam, which I've never been to. Don't I would love either. to go see just to look at the red light district and be like, whoa. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Take all the pictures. Take all the pictures. <laughs> This is February of 1991. There's a man named Richard Linkhammer. Linkhammer. Oh, I'm sorry. What, yeah. One more time. I think it's Richard. Richard, I can say. Good. Linkhammer. Linkhammer. Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll go with it. Richard. You know, they're Dutch. So he went to the police. He's, he's reporting his wife, Hanny, missing. Hanny? Hanny. Mm-hmm. It's short for, it's it's a really pretty name. It's short for Hannelore. Oh, God, I like that so different. much better than Hanny. Me too. I know. Hanny but... sounds too much like Fanny. It does. It does. But, all right. It's just I'll not as pretty. Yeah, we'll go with right. Hanny. Hanny had been missing for about a week. And oh, he, shit. He went to go, <laughs> went to go report her. He's like, oops. Jeez. He God. said he'd been searching for her, but he found no trace of her with friends. Like he'd gone to friends' houses. He's gone to, you know, relatives. No trace of her, but he had found her red bicycle at a nearby train station and he was a little worried that maybe she left him. So that's why he didn't report it right away. Reported it first, but still. Uh, yeah. Did she have reason to leave him? <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. okay. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. So he why didn't did report that it. come to mind? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So police are immediately suspicious of him. They're like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, right. <laughs> you are the husband. And you didn't come in. So they begin to try to hunt to find his wife. They search their home. They try to find her with sniffer dogs. I mean, they oh, they were on it. They did a much better job than Richard did. Richard just went yeah. to look for her bike. I just want to make sure the bike's okay. You're right. So they find this. They can take the sniffer dogs. They even do an aerial infrared scan with the Royal Dutch, whatever they are. Wow. Like the army or something. But. They're coming out with nothing. So they they searched way more yeah, than, all right. than Dick. We'll, I'll Richard call him Dick. Too. Okay. Yeah. Dick. And so <laughs> without a body or any sign of her, police are stuck though. So right. because again, when you're an adult, you have the rights to go missing. Right. I assume that that's also in Amsterdam. You're also allowed to go missing, should you I care think so? To. I think so. Especially, you know, if you're in a situation you don't want to be in. They decide, okay, we got to look into Richard and Hanny and see what kind of clues we can Mm -hmm. dig up. We're going to look at Richard. Richard had grown up with a less than ideal childhood, as they often do in our stories. So he was he's a young child living in Austria at the beginning of World War Two. Not a good place to be at at the beginning of World War Two. Yeah. Yeah. His mother had carried on an affair with an SS officer and had been raped by a Nazi. I mean, yeah. Whoa. Okay. They all have some issues at this, this point. This just got dark quick. Yeah, very <laughs> quickly. Got dark quick. Like, <laughs> fair with us as officer and got raped by Nazis. What? Jeez. Yeah, not good. So when she'd taken Richard back to Holland after the war, oh, get this. I had no clue this happened or even existed. So she was punished for her affair by the Dutch public who shaved her head in what they called an ugly carnival. What? An ugly carnival. Kind of like a freak show. What? Oh, oh my God. I didn't know these were things. So ugly this carnivals. Is a thing? Okay. Yeah, I had to go look up what they were because I was like, what the fuck's an ugly carnival? Yeah. Should I apply? I don't know. But no, 
Ugly carnivals cropped up after World War II when the occupied countries were liberated from German forces. So like the citizens, I guess it was pretty big in France. The citizens took a tactic out of how Nazis had treated their people and they would publicly humiliate women who had children with or collaborated with their German occupiers. Oh, my God. So sometimes this would mean publicly shaving their heads and sometimes they're beaten as well. Holy shit. And then they would be paraded through the streets, sometimes stripped naked and covered (gasps) in tar or painted with swastikas. Holy crap. So because she had slept with an SS officer, they had an affair with an SS officer. They did this to her. Wow. And I read um, this practice actually has its roots in the dark ages where the. It sounds like it. It it does, doesn't it? I'm like, why are you bringing this back in the 1900s? Tar and feathering and shit? God. So it has its roots in the Dark Ages where the Visigoths would remove a woman's hair to punish her for committing adultery as a show of power against women, since women are known for their long, luxurious locks. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, dudes are involved too. Hi. But maybe they killed the dudes. I don't know. Wow. No, I didn't know anything about this at all. This didn't come up in school. No, they didn't tell us about (laughs) ugly carnivals. What? Be like, what's an ugly carnival? I just thought an ugly carnival was like, you know, with clowns and uh, right. carnies Ooh, with no teeth and shit. For sure. That would be amazing. Can we start the ugly carnival? Right. It's, right. it's like so scary. Nobody wants to go. It's yeah. So it's actually kind of crazy that people freed that are freed from the Germans. They take up the same practice as the Nazis themselves. Yeah, way we did to the go. same way, thing. Way to learn from others' mistakes. Right. Awesome. I know. So fair, apparently Nazis during the war, they would take um, German women that they thought had slept with non-Aryans or with foreigners and they ordered their head shaped. So it's the same. What? Right. Great. You're no better. Nice job. Yeah. You just hurt your own people just like they did. So Damn. Richard, when he's just five, he watched his aunt get raped and his uncle murdered. Jesus. So this okay. kid's had... Some exposure to some dark shit. I couldn't find any information on why his aunt was raped and uncle murdered in front of him, but I'm assuming it has to do with the war, possibly Nazis. I don't know. Wow. Setting up for really great life. After the war, his mother worked as a prostitute to get by in Holland and Mm. little little Richard. (laughs) Little Richard. (laughs) Richard. He went in and out of foster care. So that's fun. At 19, Richard joined the French Foreign Legion, which I thought, okay, that sounds like a great, you know, patriotic thing. But it's described as a branch of the French army made up of volunteer foreign misfits. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Oh, okay. So it's another kind of ugly carnival. It's a whole other ugly carnival. So he goes and he's in that French Legion. He's taught how to kill and dispose of bodies. Very Wonderful. well during this. Yeah, that's I don't know if that's their life focus. skills. Yeah, great. Right. <laughs> we want we don't want to teach you to survive outside. We want to teach you how to kill and dispose of people. He turns out to be a really good shot and he's one of their best marksmen in his company. I'm so glad he's found his calling. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> For his <laughs> horrid upbringing. Yeah, we should put you in with a bunch of other misfits. But he deserts the Legion later in 1960. He, He moves in with family and he gets a job as a beer tender at a local pub. I'm not sure if they use that term then, but we have a bunch of them here. That's what they do in our breweries. They call them beer tenders. So during this period, he met, oh gosh, Leontine. Leontine. Uh, Okay. Leontine. Leontine Van Emmerich, who she fell head over heels for Richard. As for Richard, he's a bit of a ladies man. He's not. Not really interested in a monogamous relationship, but he tries. (laughs) He's one of those guys. He tries to break things off twice with her, with Leontin. Okay. But um, she just keeps coming back. And she wasn't a take no as an answer kind of girl. Just, well, especially not once she's knocked up. She's like, nope, nope. Stage five clinger. Get rid of that easy. (laughs) Stage five clinger. I'll find you. So when Leontine becomes pregnant, he dutifully marries her as he's expected to, which she's like, okay, got him, got him, <laughs> I bagged him, I bagged that bitch. So he's 25, <laughs> she's 22. 
Their wedding is followed by a reception, of course, at which a very drunk Richard and his brothers belt out tunes and they embarrass his new in-laws like they are really inappropriate. Well, this the, is a the time. long time honored tradition that's gone on for a very I mean, it really has. Today. <laughs> it does. But maybe they didn't expect it to be so aggressively right. drunken grossness. Anyway, okay. so one girl in attendance, it's Leontine's a uh, 15 year old stepsister. She's instantly enamored with Richard. Apparently she's another stage five clingers do not fall far well, from they the run tree. In the in family, this. Huh? Yes. Yeah. No. Wow. <laughs> she's instantly first time she meets him at this wedding. She's like, oh, my God, this hot. It's not just I'm in love with my sister's boyfriend. Yeah. It's her now husband. This is a right. problem. <laughs> right. This is <laughs> Andrew at their wedding. You're at their wedding, girl. Back off. He's kind of taken. Yeah, he's kind of taken at this point, honey. You're a little late. This girl's name is Hanny Godfrenen. Oh, shit. Okay. This is is Hanny. So Leontine claim that at the wedding, she heard Hanny vowing to destroy her marriage so she could have Richard for herself. At the wedding, she's telling people As a 15-year-old? Shit. That's wow. Hanning had joined the Van Emmerichs, the Leon Teens family. Okay. When it was five years before, she had joined them after her parents had had a very violent argument. And during their disagreement, mind you, Hanny's there. The couple tumbles down a flight of stairs, crashes through a glass door, after which her father grabs a hammer and beats his wife to death. <gasps> Holy shit. So Hanny's just 10 when she had witnessed this whole thing. It was just five years before. Yeah. Wow. I mean, wow. I didn't know they had such violence over there. I was thinking they're all peaceful and shit. Yeah. Since her mom was murdered, her dad goes to jail and she and her brother go to live with the Van Emmerichs. Gotcha. Okay. So Leontine's family. I'm not sure if they're actually related. To the there's, Emmerichs. If there, there's any blood yeah. shared in there or not. Or okay. whether they just took them in because they were close to the family or something. So okay. So back to Richard and Leontine. So it's just six months after the wedding. Leontine gives birth to their first child and a second just a year later. And Richard, he does well. He's an entrepreneur. He oh. opens a few butcher shops in Amsterdam. Okay. <laughs> Little creepy butcher shops, mm-hmm. but... Uh, he does it with his brothers and they're doing good. So eventually he un- and Leontine decide they move up to North Holland where they open a seaside hotel, which sounds oh, amazing. Okay. Hanny, she had lived near them and she often came to help out with the kids and babysit. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, she's still on a mission. Being around Hanny a lot, Richard discovers he's catching feelings for this now 19-year-old uh. girl. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Trying to put out those those clutches on him. So in 1966, while Hanny's over for Christmas dinner, this girl does not. She like these are big events. I better go for the broke. You know, she she waits till the major events, the big holidays Had to make her moves. Yeah. So she's over at Christmas dinner. Richard and she were washing dishes when Hanny tells him, you know what? I'm free next Monday. And she gives him that age old offer of your place or mine. (laughs) (laughs) She's 19. Does she have her own place? Apparently. I don't know how. Maybe it's a apartment down the street. Little. Right. Oh, red light district. They are. There you go. There you go. Not one to miss an opportunity. Richard, of course, agrees. And they begin. Not one to miss an opportunity. (laughs) Like, oh, well, I I don't want to miss out on a great opportunity. (laughs) I mean, he's an entrepreneur, you know. Right. Uh, So he and Hanny, they carry on their affair for about a year before Leontine catches on. Wow. But Leontine is still so in love with Richard that she's willing to do just about anything to keep him. She suggests they try a three way relationship, not like a threesome, but more like the polygamous style where... Where he alternates oh, oh, between but still, the women. It's her sister, I, even though it's not her sister, I know, it's her but sister. But still. Yeah, yeah. This is not a good idea. Yeah, so they try it's it for a, a while. Idea. You're right. 
You're right. Because they try it for a while. <laughs> and when Richard is away, the stepsisters, they fight wildly. Of course. I mean, they're. It, yeah, right. they're fighting over the same guy. There's only so much dick to go around. I mean, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, it only lasts three months, and <laughs> Hanny leaves town. She's I'm like, "I'm so surprised it lasted three months." <laughs> Richard's like, "I've got you know, I've got my cake, and I can eat it too. This is great." Exactly. Hanny's finally fed up, and she leaves town to go live in Amsterdam. But this doesn't stop her relationship with Richard. He still goes to visit her. After which, like he would go and visit her. And Hanny would then call Leontine and tell explicit details of their sexual <gasps> trysts to Leontine. Like, Dude. why even bother? What? Wow. Just to like rub it in That's her face. Cold. Yeah. That's why, cold. Why would you stay on the phone though? I'd be like, oh, it's Hanny. Click. Uh, just hang up. Yeah. You don't need to hear that shit. No. There's okay. no voicemail. She can't. No. <laughs> just no. hang up. Just let it ring. Just let it ring. Or just, just leave it off the, off the hook. hook. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a thing back then. So this kept going until 1975 for more than 10 years. When no, 10 yeah, years. 10 years. Richard's like got the best life ever. He's like, whoop. And he decides enough is enough. And she leaves for Israel. Once again, she's like, I'm out. You're not going to commit to me. I'm gone. So she leaves for Israel. Richard being such a great guy. He tells Leontine he'd stick out with her just until their two sons are older. You know what? <gasps> just for you. I'll hang around. Oh, thanks for throwing me a bone. However, before the kids are fully grown, the couple divorces just two years later. Richard's denied contact with his children, though. Good. Yeah, good. Right. So they call Hanny Aunt Hanny or (laughs) other mom or what? I mean, wife two. Yes. Right. It's like thing one and thing two, but wife one and wife two. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Richard's in his 40s. He feels like. Yep, Hanny is this perfect person I want to spend the rest of my life with. I mean, he's been trying him out for <laughs> that's driving both Jeez. for 10 years. So a few weeks after running off with Hanny, he goes and runs off with her. The two get married. Mm. Richard, he had begun writing some years before, and he delved deeper into this passion for writing. And he wrote a handful of short stories, many of which were autobiographical because everybody wants to know about Dick. Yeah, right. He did Tell us a story, Dick. <laughs> but he did turn out turn out a couple of novels as well. And meanwhile, Hanny worked as a pediatric nurse. So they're together. Yeah. They bought a, bought a property. They're doing well. Richard built a shed on their property where he would do all his writing. He'd wake up between three and four in the morning and he'd go put out all his thoughts on paper. And then he'd go on till about 10 in the morning after... His writing's complete. He'd get hammered. Like that was the. He has thoughts at three and four in the morning. I don't have <laughs> thoughts at three and four in the morning. I can't see straight at three or four. In the uh, yeah. Apparently that's when he got all creative. <laughs> Prime and, writing time. Yes. Get up. Okay. Get up and write. So he'd also become a, a little overly fond of roll spear, just okay. that specific type. And he would overdrink constantly. Ah, yes. Yes. He loves his girl spear. Every time he would finish a writing project, he'd treat himself to a crate of beer. So I looked I'm up, sorry, a crate? Yeah, a crate. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, I got to look up what a crate is. Because to me, that means like a barrel of beer I'm or something. like a case of beer. <laughs> right. And well, yeah, it's ma- a case. So it's <gasps> 24 beer cans. So oh, <laughs> Now, when he was done with a writing project or daily when he was done writing? I think he would drink a bunch daily after he was done writing, but he would buy himself a whole case again when okay. he was done with a writing project. Because, dude, so if like, he drank a case a day. <laughs> damn, how you alive, bro? <laughs> so he would dig holes around his property that he would put these cases of beer in. Why? Because... <laughs> He said, <laughs> he said, keeping them in the ground kept them cool. Apparently, maybe they're too big to go in the fridge. So he's like, <laughs> fine. Kind of like how fishermen put their beer in the water off the side of the boat right, to keep yeah. it cold. Okay. There's some holes in the dirt. So <laughs> okay. Apparently, this was such, he was so proud of this discovery that it would keep him so cold <laughs> that he would, he'd bring all his friends. He'd be like, you got to see my, my discovery might yeah i mean look at how great these holes were 
Hand me a shovel. I mean, exactly. And he would make them pretty deep, like huge, what? where he would stack all his and it keep them all cold. So it was just at the ready whenever. And so he had a bunch of holes everywhere around his yard. Money from his book sales began flowing in. He actually oh. started doing pretty good. Okay. And to add to his good luck streak, he hit it big on the stock market. Wow. Well, yeah. He's a jack of all trades, isn't he? He does it all. I mean, he, he discovers beer holes. He does it all. So <laughs> Beer holes? <laughs> you can put your beer I, in it. I thought your beer hole was your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Stick this in your beer hole. Ah, yes. So the couple couple do well enough. They're able to buy a second home, this time in Portugal. Holy cow. I know. However, in 1987, the stock market crashed. Oh, yep. Right. Yep. And so did all their savings and everything. I wish they had put some of their savings in those beer holes. Maybe that would have been helpful, but <laughs> nope. So they had to sell their home in Portugal mm. and fights between the two start breaking out. You know how finances are always the biggest reason for fights and divorces right. and mean, all that fun stuff. I'd be cranky if I had to sell my home in Portugal. I know. No more weekends in Portugal. Have to stay stay by the beer holes instead. Right. Boring. This led to Richard drinking more and Hanny becoming more unhappy because he won't stop his fucking drinking. Uh -uh. Neighbors and friends would see bruises on Hanny and had a feeling Richard had to do something to do with the Ooh. bruises. Yeah. And that's when in 1991, Hanny goes missing. So we're back to the beginning. Wow. So that's kind of the background between these two. Whew, okay. And after no sign of Hanny for a week, you know, Richard did that, that report on her. Finally decided to notify the uh, authorities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the police felt like, you know what? I don't think after all researching all this, I don't think she left of her own free will. She doesn't, mm -hmm. but maybe something probably happened to her. After Hanny went missing, neighbors felt like it was strange that Richard had taken a full week to report her missing, just like we were kind of mm -hmm. like, uh. right. Plus, he's acting all nonchalant and he's not trying to find her. He's not changing anything. Oh, so as for Hanny's bike that was found at the train station, that was made even stranger by the fact that there were no trains coming or going the night she had disappeared. Oh, what are you doing at the train station? And nobody right. had reported seeing her the next day on the train. Interesting. What are you just hanging out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Train station? Not likely, but. Suspicious. Yeah, it's a little suspicious. Police felt like Richard had done something to Hanny. So they questioned him over and over again. And they search his house and his shed and they confiscate mm -hmm. a lot of items thinking, mm -hmm. well, maybe maybe this meat grinder has something to do with it. Like they even oh, took a meat grinder. You know, he, he was a butcher at some point. You know, so I know. But yeah, so he still had the meat grinder just in, his shed I guess. in case they needed yeah, just, to grind some meat. Exactly. So they even took that. They they took a bunch of shit. They did. Like I said, they used the Air Force, used their infrared scanner. The dogs mm -hmm. did the sniffing. But they're left with still no clues. In Holland, if there's no conclusive proof that a crime has been committed, you can't legally arrest somebody. So, you know, here we have kind of circumstantial yeah. evidence can point to it. But right. They can't do that there. So Richard is left to live for free. Yay, I'm free. Richard waits five years. And on the fifth anniversary of Hanny's disappearance, he has her declared dead. Wow. At least he waited. I mean, you know, we have a lot of these stories where mm -hmm. people are like insurance same day. Hey, mm -hmm. I have you, a bad have feeling me? about his beer holes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a very bad, I think I know what he shoved in his beer hole. Right. Yep. You got something in your, mm -hmm. <laughs> shove this in your beer hole. <laughs> yeah. Why aren't they, are, were they checking the beer holes? I don't know. It's... But he began collecting a widower's pension, which dang, mm. probably why we don't have those in the States. It, it's oh. probably like our insurance, I suppose. They probably don't have yeah. to have insurance over there. So he sold their home and he leaves for Amsterdam. He always claimed that he... Didn't know what happened to Hanny. He never said, I did something. I don't know what happened to her, basically. He would say, I think she just left. Mm -hmm. um, well, he, she had reason to, but. Right. But he'd also give really mysterious and odd answers when asked with if he murdered her. Uh, so Not just 
No. Not just no. Because no works. <laughs> right, right. So, you know, he's kind of getting well known for his writing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's being interviewed. And on a TV show, he's asked point blank if he killed her. And his reply was, quote, the villagers say I cut her into pieces or put her in the pond or in a compost hill, unquote. I mean, that was his answer. We not We didn't ask you what they said. <laughs> Did you do it? So it'd be like those kind of answers. Very good at deflecting. Yeah. Yeah. When confronted by friends, he would ask, why? Why do you want to know? Or what do you mean? Why? Because we'd like to know what happened to her. (laughs) Or he'd say, you know what? Now's not the time to talk about it. Not like, no. You get back to me and let me know when a good time is. (laughs) Yeah. It's tomorrow. It's Wednesday at five. Okay. Can we pencil something in? Since I've got, I kind of want to talk about it. Right. So then Richard, he approaches his publisher one day with a new book. It's called Wednesday Mince Day. Like as in minced like meat. This. Gross. I don't like this at all. Yep. Mm-mm. No. Mm. Mm-mm. Plus, why does Wednesday have to be mince day? Can we, can we pick it? <laughs> why is it Wednesday? Any day be mince day? Monday mince day sounds better. It's got the M's and it's an alliteration. Uh, I don't, no. What kind of writer is he? This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> try Maybe. harder, Dick. Harder. Try Harder day. <laughs> you know, if you put a comma in there, it's all different. Right. Yes. So, okay. So the book played off of the press that he'd gotten for his wife going missing. So mm-hmm. he was kind of like, oh, I've got to use that to my advantage because right. all these people are asking all these questions. I'm going to be mysterious about it. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Right. It'll sell more books. Yeah, exactly. And this book was full of tales of ways in which he could have killed his wife. Yeah, that sounds familiar, right? Like, like yeah, you know, like that book right? you had. Kind of like one draft from murder. Yeah, yeah, Maybe exactly. Maybe don't write about the shit. Don't write about the shit. But he's totally playing into it. Like, At least he waited until after. Right. <laughs> she did it before. True. <laughs> True. He's like, hey, I'm mystery. I'm going to sell more books. This is uh-huh. great. So one of the seven ways in which he described in his manuscript was that he could have destroyed Hanny's body by mincing her corpse bit by bit through a meat grinder, then feeding it to pigeons. Wait, first of all, I didn't know that pigeons were meat eaters. I didn't either. That's gross. Also, I literally just put on the shopping list to get hamburger (sighs) so we could grill. And now I really don't want to. Wednesday, mince meat. (laughs) (laughs) Plus, how many pigeons would that take? I mean, we're talking about a a lot of meat here. Human. That's a lot of of food. That's a lot of pigeons. I mean, they have tiny little tummies. I know. Well, you see in New York City and in Central Park, you know, if you Mm -hmm. see all those people feeding the pigeons, there's huge flocks. Maybe there's flocks. Yes. I have been in Italy in St. Marco's and San Marco Square with all the pigeons and stuff like that. Maybe that's all I had was bread. But but maybe meat. It brings. all my meat brings pigeons to the yard. They're I like was just <laughs> thinking that. What? So yeah, that was one of of the uh, the ways he described. But the publisher who got the book, you know, he got the mm-hmm. manuscript. He's so appalled by the book that he rejects it. He's like, "Oh, this is disgusting." No, good. <laughs> no one wants to read this shit, man. Nobody wants to read about your disgusting ugh, ideas. And who would do that? I don't know. Mm. Anyway. Soon, though, the manuscript gets out to the public. I wonder who released that released a little bit. Released it, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Leaked it. Yeah. Whoops. TMZ. Yeah. <laughs> Better men. MTV, all the, all the Vs. So uh, Richard gets even more notoriety that he loves, of course. Meanwhile, the new owners of Richard and Hanny's prior home, they mm-hmm. begin a renovation project. Mm-hmm. And they deconstruct the entire garden and that's when workers come across a chunk of something clay something buried beneath the garden shed's concrete floor (gasps) oh he didn't bury the the beer in the garden and i mean in that in the shed it was outside but he did but they he had also made one in the shed for the beer that he didn't show everybody else before so it was oh, that's originally where you get the good shit. That's, that's the good where you shit. Get the, that's right. the high end grolsch. Inside oh, of that kind of clay material, they found a human skull, <gasps> which was later determined by a forensic scientist to be Hanny's. <gasps> so they had to put back all the, the teeth and everything. Oh, no. 
So finally, Richard is arrested and investigators are thrilled to finally have gotten enough evidence mm. to prosecute him. He's probably wishing he had used the grinder now. Right. Damn it. <laughs> Shit. I should have done that. Good idea. Maybe he should have written the book first, like like mm. the lady did, and mm -hmm. he would have had all mm -hmm. his ideas. But Right. There is something to be said about pre-planning. Yeah, there is. But he's finally arrested in February of 2000. And he said, wow. I know. I mean, he got away for, for a long time. And right as he's arrested, he said, I've been waiting nine years for this. So he knew it was coming. <sighs> but why read the books then? I don't know. I, right. It was like he was like enticing them or like yeah. daring them to, you know, come get me. Why sell the house? You know, somebody eventually is going to dig no, into that's stuff. That's true. Then just stay there. Stay there. Don't. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. According to Richard's confession, he actually is like, I'm going to tell you everything. Oh, so he tells him Hanny had come home from a shopping excursion and one of their fights break out. So this fight is worse than others. And Hanny orders Richard to leave. She's like, get the out. fuck out. Mm. The two begin shoving and hitting one another. Hanny grabs a crowbar off the washing machine. Um, I know. Like, why uh, is the crowbar with the washing machine? It's a crowbar in the washing machine. <laughs> why is it on the it's washing machine? not where machine? I keep my crowbar. No, okay. not usually, but you never know. So what she grabs should. that off the washing machine and she starts swinging at him. Oh, jeez. They wrestle. Mm -hmm. Richard wrestles the crowbar away from her. He hits her a few times with it about the head. He said she screamed and he kept hitting her until the screaming stopped and she fell to the floor. Brutal. I mean, he's yeah, really. just telling all the details. He then drags her body out to the shed and threw her into the hole, into the beer hole that he'd used for his stash of beer crates. And the next day he covered the hole with dirt, a layer of compost to mask the smell. Oh, God. Oh, and a layer of concrete. And then he lived there for a while, you know, like, whoa, for a few years. Okay. This is... The second time now we have had a murder that occurred in front of a washing machine. Candy. That's right, Candy. What's her face? Candy. With the, with yeah. the axe in front of the washing machine. Mm -hmm. And then this is the second episode where the body was buried under manure. <gasps> You're right. I didn't even think of the manure being <laughs> oh, a murder. No, right? Shit. It, it, indeed. Shit. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. <laughs> uh, so Richard sentenced. Get this to seven years in prison. I'm sorry, seven? Seven. They're a little little kind there. But he only served three. What the fuck? What? Uh, right. What the actual fuck? Library fines in the U.S. are harsher than that. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, I know. I was like, whoa. They lied on him. So he only serves three years. On January 21st of 2016... Richard Klinkhamer was found dead, though, at the age of 78 from a single shot to his head. So he killed himself. Oh, oh, OK. OK. This is once he was out. This is once he was out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right after he got out or a while huh. after. Richard's book, Wednesday Mince Day, was published. <laughs> Wednesday Mince Day. It's so <laughs> terrible. It's so a horrible title. And it was by far his biggest On seller. Wednesdays, we wear pink and we mince. And <laughs> we mince the meat okay. and we wears the pink. Sorry. OK, you were saying. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah, that that book's his bestseller, but not because he's uber talented, but it's because of the fact that he had killed his wife, then described it in a book, of course, because oh, you know, people geez. are attracted to the macabre. I mean, here we are. Hi. Hi. And everybody listening. It's true. <laughs> Hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. It is. <laughs> yep. It's us. We are the problem. So even though he's a known murderer, Richard was actually very well liked by his neighbors and friends, like anybody that they always knew him. are. If you're, you're the safest person. If you're the neighbor uh -huh. of a serial killer, it's so true. He yep. was the nicest boy. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like this guy was super charming. One of those super charming guys. That's why he had two wives at once. Basically, uh, wow. They said he was a little eccentric. And wait till I show. I should have pulled a picture for you, but he had these giant eyebrows that were. Um, Gray, you know, like and okay. fluffed out like caterpillars and just <laughs> really odd looking later on. Like odd guy. Like like the, the dad from Schitt's Creek. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big ones. Uh, yeah. This he didn't look that good. Oh, well, um, yeah, right. He just reminds me. Of, yeah. He reminds me of trying to be as eccentric as like Salvador Dali, you know, uh, that okay. kind of 
odd look just to shock people. After Hanny was done and before he went to jail, Richard had even bagged a girlfriend 35 years younger than him. Come on. Ah, Because he was that. I didn't know eyebrows were that sexy. (laughs) Doesn't do it for me. I'm sorry. I don't know. No, no. (laughs) Especially the unibrow. Maybe, maybe. No. The full, full oney. No, no, no. I'm not into the Burt from Sesame Street. Look, it's just not my. mm. No, (laughs) no. That, so that is the story of Richard Klinkheimer. Holy shit. Two writing stories in a row of writers who wrote about. How weird is that? Two writing murders. stories in a row. And we had both row. planned these before the other was done. And and the moral of the story is whether you write about it ahead of time or after, you're it doesn't matter. It's, you're still <laughs> fucked. <laughs> it's still super stupid. Just don't do it. <gasps> wow. Yeah. So would you like to hear my sources? I, I would. And I also would like some suggestions for what I can grill because now I don't want to make burgers. <laughs> so if you could. Let's go vegetarian today. I, think, uh, I can't do it full, now. Full leafy greens. You're not doing meat. From allthatsinteresting.com, theguardian.com, narratively.com, a story with an article by Tiffany R. Jansen called He Killed His Wife, Then Wrote a Novel About It. Um, <laughs> Great title. <laughs> it's very. Correct. Um, and then pictolic.com. Oh, that was great, though. Thank you. Anyway, that was let's a good start. One. Thank you. Ugly Carnival. Now let's we've learned. An ugly we, carnival. we have learned another historical fact. Right. Ugly I don't carnival. know. I feel like all carnivals have an ugly factor. I don't know any that's like true. That's high true. fashion, gorgeous <laughs> carnivals. That's just oh, not... maybe that's what we need to make. Gorgeous carnivals. Right. right. High fashion no. carnies. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you guys for listening again. Yes, thank you. See you we'll next week. See you next week. Hey, Oddies. Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM. If you're a longtime listener, hey, we cannot thank you enough for your continued support. And if you're a new listener, thanks for giving us a try. If you like us, please drop us a like, subscribe, or rate us so we can share our stories with more people around the world. And if you'd like more information, like links to our podcast and socials, along with our Patreon fan page, those links are all on Linktree under ODFM Podcast. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash ODFM Podcast. Side note, you guys, we're obsessed with fan art, and we love making things with it, like stickers for our fans. So if you'd like us to use your designs, send it to us at ODFMPodcast at gmail.com. And if we use your design, we'll be sure to send you a sticker. Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM, hosted by Kelly DeVries and Jenna Swanson. Production and editing by Kelly DeVries. Theme music by Eric Swanson. ODFM is a satirical true crime podcast for entertainment purposes only. The stories you hear are serious and true. The comments and opinions are not. We apologize if any of our content is harmful or disrespectful.